Hi, my name's Anna. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my buddies. So you're curious about working multiple jobs or you already have more than one job and you want to know how to make your life a little bit easier. This video is not just about how to work multiple jobs, but how to thrive in the process. Run the clip. I've been working more than one job consistently for almost a year, in addition to completing a course at the same time. Throughout this video, I will be asking you questions that will hopefully lead you on the path of self-discovery. First, figure out why you want to work more than one job. What is your end goal? Is this only going to be temporary? And if so, what's your target? What is important to you? What drives you? Because if you find something that gives you energy, you will be able to do more than you ever imagined. There's the financial side of having multiple jobs, but this video is also relevant for someone working one job and studying part-time, or doing a training course to improve your current work while being full-time employed. It is about taking your free time and using it to do something else to better your life. There are just times when you have to hustle and put in more work. I've made a plan for the next 24 months which will require an extreme level of hustle, but will be totally worth it in the end. Have a hustle timeline in place so that you know how long you need to work at this level. Hustle timeline! <laughs> nice. When working really hard on a lot of things, you need to make sure that you're looking after yourself. Getting enough sleep, aiming for at least seven hours per night, make sure that you're eating decent meals on a regular basis. I struggle with both of these, burning the candle on both ends, staying up late, getting up early, and forgetting to eat if I'm just too busy with my work. I got so distracted with work last year that I constantly forgot to eat and had to rearrange my entire schedule to make sure that food was a priority. If you have similar unhealthy patterns, what I do is I set alarms on my phone to remind me to eat at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then also have alarms for getting ready for bed. So just to trigger that process, like start to do the dishes, time to go brush your teeth, just to remind me that I should go to sleep a little bit earlier. I also found it really helpful to create a productive morning routine. I start my day at 6.30 to 7.30, depending on when I go to sleep. This helps me get business tasks out of the way, eat breakfast, make coffee, stretch, meditate, and work out if there's time before starting my work day as an architect. I have to be fairly flexible during the week because my full-time job as an architect is my main priority. I have a morning schedule that I keep to, but as for an evening schedule during the week, I have to be a lot more flexible if I need to work late on a project or make last minute changes for a client before a deadline. Think of your day like a traffic light. There will be times of the day that you know for sure you're going to be busy. So if you have a main job, the working hours from let's say nine to five would be in the red zone. There will be times of day that you might be able to work and you might have some free time. So for me, I might have free time in the evening, but also I might be working late. So I'm not really sure. And it can depend from a day-to-day -day basis. So that would be in the yellow or amber zone. Then finally, the green zone, times of the day or week that you know for sure that you're going to have free time and you will have the energy to do extra work. During this time, you'll need to be willing to dedicate your energy to fulfilling your other tasks and adding on extra work if you need. Using the stoplight system, you can better estimate how much time you'll have free for secondary employment or coursework. And if you're planning to add on more work with a fixed full-time job schedule, then use the traffic light system to see which areas you're a little bit more flexible with. Also be realistic about the amount of time you have while also taking into account eating, exercise, and downtime, which is really important. What is the realistic, sustainable amount of time that you can give to working on a side hustle, a second job, a course, or starting a business on the side? Besides extra work, there will also be times that you just need to absorb knowledge and learn, read, and explore. For me, I call this time period a data download and could last anywhere between one day and a couple months. During this time, I'll be researching, reading, and absorbing as much as I can while I start to form a strategy in my head. Preparing knowledge on a topic before you take any action can be really helpful to build your confidence and be better equipped for the roles ahead of you. For example, what I've done with YouTube, from the time I decided to start my channel to the day I released my first video, it was two months. During those two months, I spent between two and eight hours a day preparing, researching, planning, and strategizing my content for the next two years as well as other plans that will eventually branch off of my YouTube channel and advance my career in the long term. A bit excessive, I know. <laughs> I just really like to strategize and plan for the most successful outcome with the most efficient schedule. And it can be scary to start anything new. The first day of any job can be very intimidating. 
there'll be tough parts to any job and there'll be good parts to most jobs. It's not all gonna be sunshine and daisies working long days using multiple areas of your brain, which can be very draining, so make sure you look after yourself and try and avoid burnout. Know the signs. If your body's starting to tell you that something's wrong, listen to it and take a step back. Be kind to yourself. You're not working this hard to make yourself sick, so take care. The pandemic was the perfect time to do all this because we couldn't spend time with family or friends and some of us were in total isolation. This meant less distractions and a lot more time to get down to business. Starting these habits in 2020 was a great thing for me and will translate much easier into the post-pandemic life, having built a solid system first. Try and take obstacles as they come and maintain balance with whatever your current situation is. You really never know what's going to happen next, but if you believe in yourself and problem solve along the way, you can jump any hurdle. I've prepared strategies for different circumstances and have contingency plans so I can be as pliable as possible with whatever's thrown at me. If you can maintain some level of flexibility, it's a much more healthy way to live your life and a lot more sustainable in the long term. Working hard is great, but don't miss out on special events and moments with others. There is no point working hard for a distant dream and letting life pass you by in the process. Plan and work for the life you want, but don't sacrifice the life you have for it. And it's true what Lori Grenner said, entrepreneurs are willing to work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week, which means they'd be much happier working much longer at something they're passionate about than working any old nine to five job. The time is much less important if what you're doing drives you and gives you purpose. Sometimes to get to the point of being an entrepreneur, you have to work several jobs on the side to support your main business. There are hundreds of inspiring stories of people struggling and then succeeding down the line. And I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're aiming for something more than what you currently have. So what's your end goal? Have you figured it out yet? Just like having a long distance relationship, having a timeline in place and a target at the end can help you make it work and help you focus. Hustle timeline! <laughs> If you're wondering what jobs you can do in addition to your main job, let me tell you a couple. Think about the skills and interests you have and what jobs might be available to you that you might not have thought of already. Here is a list of 10 possible side hustles you can do from the comfort of your own home. Many of these will pay out what you put in so the salaries may vary drastically. One, online surveys. Two, online reviews. Three, live streaming. I have personal experience with this and can make an entire separate video about it if you like. Four, selling your skills as a freelancer on Fiverr or other similar platforms. Five, creating an e-commerce business. Six, teach a language with online tutoring. Seven, start a blog. Eight, become a virtual assistant. Nine, if you have a spare room, you can host on Airbnb. And 10, you can become a proofreader for websites, blogs, and businesses. Think about your unused skills and how you might be able to utilize them. This could also be really fun and exciting if it happens to be an old passion that you've had and you can finally use this as an opportunity to make some money with that passion on the side. You need to be excited to get out of bed every morning. If not for all of your jobs, at least for one. Let that one job drive the rest of them. Baseline, if you're not interested in any of your jobs, it's gonna make it a lot harder to stick with them. But if you enjoy what you're doing and each job sparks a different part of your personality, that is the sweet spot. It will make it so easy to bounce back and forth between different work because you're actually enjoying yourself. For me, I've really enjoyed almost all of the jobs that I've done, but I really had to focus on time management and organization to be as efficient with my time as possible. Taking away that stress helps me maintain a high level of enthusiasm on a regular basis. You're building a better future for yourself, and sometimes you have your head down so much just getting the work done, you need to look up and remind yourself just how amazing you are and how well you're doing. You will thank yourself in the future for your hard work and persistence. Working more than one job or working one job and a course or whatever your situation is not something that you can easily do from the very beginning. It's like working a muscle and lifting weights, gaining strength over time. You can't just start lifting 100 pounds. You need to build up to that. Or at least I can't. Same thing with working multiple jobs or working long hours. You add a little bit at a time until you get stronger. It will get easier as long as you have balance and don't burn out. Also, take into consideration the location of your jobs. I've had a much easier time because all of my jobs have been located at home. Also a convenience of the pandemic. I used to work in an office in London, and after working at home for almost a year, it's made it a lot easier to balance having more than one job. Whereas if your jobs are in different locations, you'll need to take into consideration the travel times and potential delays along the way. Work hard, adapt to situations, and maintain flexibility. Also, depending on your main employment contract, it is your legal and ethical responsibility to notify your practice of any secondary income you might be taking on. You will likely need to make sure that there's no conflict of interest and submit any potential issues to your employer. 
For example, if you're starting a business very similar to your current work, it might be construed as a conflict of interest. And if you poach clients from your employed work, it definitely is. So beware. For me, working as a full-time architect, I notified my practice of my live streaming, modeling, voice acting, YouTube, and future e-commerce work that will be coming this year. I wanted to be as transparent and open with them as possible to create a relationship of mutual respect. I balance working hard on my day job and then being productive in my free time with my other ambitions. I chose jobs that would be able to fit into my schedule and be completed at my own convenience, which helped me balance between two and five jobs in any given week. Figure out what currency you have at your disposal, whether it's your time, your skill, or your money. There are only so many hours in the day and the week, and if you have a limited amount of time, you may be able to outsource some of your work so that you can focus on the bigger picture. I hired an amazing video editor and we worked together as a team to produce three high quality videos per week. Without him, this whole operation you see wouldn't be possible. For me, this is an investment and I will likely not see any financial return on my investment for months, if not years. But I believe in what I'm doing and I think it will help a lot of people, so I'm happy to make that initial investment to make sure that the videos are high quality for all of you. If you're interested in where I hired my video editor from and what imagery software we use, it's linked in the description below. And if you haven't already watched my video about how to get organized in 2021, check it out here. There will be so much joy and freedom in your future when you work hard and accomplish your goals. Be responsible, be proactive, and be ready for the challenges you'll face ahead. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more content. Be kind to each other, be kind to yourself, and have a great day. See you on the flip side. Thank you.